Hello, everyone. Welcome to Twin Window. We're twins. I'm Drew, the gay one. And I'm Grant, and I'm not. I mean, I'm a yeah. twin. I'm a drag queen living in LA with my husband and deep anxiety. And I am a former pastor living Ooh. in Florida with my wife and four children. You have four kids now? Yeah, I've been meaning oh. to text you. That's on me. Yeah. That's on yeah. me. And I'm sorry, I'm going to speak for you now because I'm I'm the gay one. I'm the one that holds all the power in this current society because of the liberals. Finally, yeah, my... you acknowledge it. You acknowledge what's happening to us. Thank you. Grant recently left the church, so now it's okay to be gay. And we're just <laughs> kind of getting to know Wait, each I'm, other. It's, what? I mean, it's always been okay. Has I want to say that. Regardless oh. of anyone else's beliefs, mm. it's actually always been okay. Okay, that's not that's like not like what like I the heard. Earth is round, even though you believe it's flat. And well, that's there's okay an ice that wall. You believe that there's an ice wall, and no one can prove I get it to me otherwise. So we started this podcast. We recorded a couple episodes, and we're really excited to. Well, I'm mostly excited to share gay sex stuff with Grant, and he doesn't want to hear it. He doesn't want to hear it, but because he's an ally, he has to. Hashtag ally. Thank you. Thank Hashtag you so much. Ally. Always listening. It's really us catching up. We went so far in different directions with our lives <laughs> over the last 20 years. We did. And now those roads are intersecting again. And so we tell a lot of stories from our childhood. We tell a lot of stories from our adulthood that we never told each other. Isn't That's kind of what it is. Doesn't it feel odd that there are so many stories that I, I've told so many people and after recording just two episodes with you, I realized I haven't told you most of my stories. Isn't that wild? We're twins. I know, Church. and I've been telling Church. you telepathically because I thought that would work because we're twins, and okay, you haven't been getting fact, any of my messages. No, None it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work at all. So enjoy I'm this first episode, and um, yeah, sorry. Do it. Hi, I'm Drew. I'm the gay twin. I'm Grant. And he doesn't believe in labels. We are twin brothers who, you know, we've lived different lives. I decided to be a drag queen because my parents didn't love me the way they should have. Grant became a pastor for the same reason. Yeah, so it's not a joke. I was a pastor. And then Drew, you went and chose to be gay, right? You yeah. made that choice. Yeah, it was a hard choice. But, but you ultimately, I regret it. But you're sticking with it all these years later. And here I am turning my back on the church. So not necessarily. I don't want to be painted into a corner. So you're. Oh, OK. I've, well, sometimes Pornhub accidentally takes me to the straight section and I'm like, well, I'm already here. It's a joke that I like to lead with that. Like, yes, I have a twin brother, but I'm a drag queen and he's a preacher. And it just blew everyone's minds because I don't know if you know this grant, but the queer community um, religion has really helped us grow and change. And um, that was always no one's our traumatized. Goal. If we ever yeah. talked about the gay community, we were always like, how can we help? How can we help them grow yeah, before yeah. they burn? And I thank you for that. And so it was always kind of fun to see people's reactions. So now that you're not a preacher anymore, I do still lead with that. Yeah, I'm a drag queen. He's a pastor. Well, he used to be. But they hear pastor and then they start crying. So I don't really have to go into detail. Yeah, use it. Use it to your advantage. Thank I did you. for a number of years. You um, did. And it worked out. Honestly, it, after after Grant stopped preaching, uh, which was a weird choice. I, I don't know. Publicly. We're connecting. I still privately. Right yeah, before yeah, yeah. this. No, I having, preaching. Yeah, having conversations with him is tough. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, his kids hate him. We've reconnected in a way. Well, okay. Okay. We've connected in a way we never have before. And we, we, we thought, didn't have why not document to, it? Just for clarity. It well, sounded very much like we hooked up. We didn't. Well, because you live in Florida and I live in California. That's what's keeping it from here. happening? Logistics? Well, you live, uh, we have different That's rules in California. Happening. We don't allow it. We oh, don't allow it here. Oh, okay. I don't know what Florida's it's, rules are. It's the law is what you're saying? No, I don't know. We're just like, we're connecting. Um, the, you're the first family member I've ever like been around where I haven't had to like censor myself in any way. I am also the first family member you were ever around. Think about that. Oh, yeah. We were that was fun. Now that you're not a part of the church, you don't throw up anytime you hear something gay. So I wanted to present 50, gay 50. things to you. I don't as much, for sure. Right, right, right. It's a lot to oh, undo, no, yeah. though. 
I'm happy to do it though. I really Thank you. am. Thank you. You've been actually, you've been really helpful. You keep sending me all kinds of dick pics and things. And yeah, um, yeah. My kids can't use my phone or my iPad anymore because we have no idea when they're coming. Well, no, the pics I send, they're typically not coming. I just want that to be clear. <laughs> they I are like disease, a clean, though. All of them I are like diseased. a clean surface. I don't Speaking know Speaking of diseased, uh, yes? I wanted... Here, let me let you in on a little... Can I let you in on a little gay um, health thing? You want to hear about health? Yeah, let's do it. You know how our dad had throat cancer because HPV? What do you mean because HPV? The type of throat cancer he had was caused by HPV. Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. Wait, is that a, is that a hundred percent of the time it's caused by HPV? No, uh, but that particular kind is, and that's what Michael Douglas had. Did you not know that? I knew that. I knew about Michael Douglas. Our dad has he had HPV cancer. Yeah, Grant. What? Dad loved going down on women. He loved it, even if they what? hated it. He loved what? it. <laughs> what? I You're the straight this. one. How do you not know this? No, How I mean, do you not I know, know I know, I know, I know what he loves to do in the bedroom. It's all we talk about. But I didn't know that was the type of cancer. Wait, hang on, hang on. So I okay. don't think I made that up. I just want that to be clear. It feels, I, it feels made. I up. don't That's think wild. I did. I don't. Well, anyway, HPV is not fun, but we all have it. And as a as a gay man, all, wait, all all humans have HPV. I mean, people our age probably. Grant, you probably have HPV. Okay. Have you seen Angela lately? I have. Uh, that's my she wife walks forever. around public with her shoes off. Well, and anyway, a lot of public bathrooms. I've sat down in a lot of public bathrooms. That's how you get it. That's what the church told me. Last summer, Curtis and I, there's a public beach in Malibu that we like to go to because no one's ever there. And I go into the bathroom because I'm not going to pee in the ocean because I don't go in the ocean. And why? There is a Why would you pee there. in the ocean? Because Grant, like, uh, God, I really, this is going to take a while to break down for you. But uh, gay people, we don't feel safe on land. Do you think we're suddenly going to feel safe in water? We understand even less of that. This is a solid point. However, Dolphins I would rape. Say, Dolphins rape. But it seems like a really gay-friendly environment. It's really colorful. Um, okay, so that's a cartoon that you're referencing. That's The Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. And that is pretty gay. But it's got um, music. So also Did gay. you ever think Prince Eric was hot? <laughs> I thought Prince Eric was hot. No. Oh, that's weird. Anyway, but I go into this bathroom and there is a man at the end urinal slapping his penis in his hand. So I go to the urinal furthest from him, and he starts that's, that's slapping. That's rules. That's obvious. You wouldn't go anywhere yeah. near him. Yeah. I don't want anyone to think that I'm that's gay. Ridiculous. And he starts slapping his penis in his hand to, like, get my attention. And I just really had to pee. So I just went, no. That's a thing? And he left me alone. Hang on. <laughs> I need to know this. He's slapping what? a flaccid penis, or he's slapping a an erect penis? You know what? I, I didn't look, but it sounded hefty. Either way, he's doing a great job. Wow. Yeah. I've never experienced anything like that. So that's just... Ever? A, no. So that's the signal is... Well, no, no, no. That, it's not like, that's not in the guidelines. People do it all very differently. Did I ever tell you about the time that a guy whipped his dick out in a Hudson News at O'Hare? When I was no. looking at magazines, oh no. yeah, this guy. And I was standing had... next to you, which is weird. Why I had it? I didn't. Even you notice. don't look down. Anyway, <laughs> he. Problem. I'm in Hudson News. I'm looking for a crossword. Right. I'm standing in front of the magazines, and this guy walks up, and he's got a Martha Stewart Living magazine, like down low. I look over, and he smiles at me, and I was like, "Great." Because I love positive reinforcement. It's not sure. something I got a lot of. Yeah. And our parents were frowning um, all the time at you. Listen, it's my fault. There was a okay? lot of smiling at me. And then. It's my fault. I crossed my arms too much. And it made <laughs> me look like a girl, to <laughs> quote my mom. <laughs> Is anyway, that real? And then, what you just said real? What? Quoting mom? She really said you look like a Grant, girl. Grant, I was. your arms? I was never allowed to cross my arms in public if mom was around. That was one of her biggest okay. things with me. Okay. I, so I don't remember the that I do remember the way you crossed your arms though. You'd always go, "What does that mean?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was dealing with a lot. <laughs> I was dealing with a lot. Okay? So that was weird. And it I don't think it was choreography. so much about looking like a woman. I think it all involved. It was just a lot. You'd knock she stuff off like shelves. It. 
She didn't like my choreography, my eight count. Uh, uh, yeah, I wasn't allowed to cross my arms. Sometimes I wasn't allowed to put my hands in my pockets, which I didn't fully understand. Um, it's the yeah, gateway. mom would always say, it's the gateway you look like a girl. Jerk in it. Really? And, the, and because she said that, I'm now a drag queen. Had she said, you look great, you look like a boy, I'd be a doctor. It's a solid point. Speaking of doctor in your arms, sorry, this is a tangent. but or a Go for it. But. Speaking of doctors and your arms, do you Thanks. remember getting your shots before college? No. You don't? You don't remember us going and getting the vaccines or whatever we needed to get before college? Well, the vaccines made me gay. Too you much don't vaccine. remember? You don't remember the needle no. getting stuck in your arm and you what screaming? What do you mean it got stuck in my arm? Oh, my no. gosh. It was the best. What? You don't remember you were crying and you were shaking before we ever got the needle? I mean, I don't, but like that sounds like me. Okay, so we had to go get the the vaccines or whatever we had to get for extra autism or whatever. And right, right. you were freaking out before they ever did anything. You were like hyperventilating and you were crying already. And so the oh. nurse said, why don't you, talking to me, why don't you go show him it's not a big deal? She says, relax your arm because if you flex your arm, you get tense and flex your arm, the needle can't move. So I relax my arm. She gives me the shot. It's over. And then she's like, okay, Drew. And you're, you're still, you're very upset, but you're trying. You don't remember this? No. So you, but I was 17. Life was really complicated. She says, relax your arm. She's like, okay, okay. And you relax your arm. She sticks a needle in. You freak out and flex your sure. arm. And she can't get the needle out. <laughs> you don't remember That's this? because we were mostly bone. We were mostly bone. <laughs> You were That's crying. Not me. She You're hit a bone. freaking out, and she's tr she's like, "You have to relax your arm." And so now she's like wiggling it. Oh, she got boned. She must have gotten boned. That's not I, me. That's I, not on me. I tell my kids that story when they go get shots. I tell you them, say like, this is what Uncle Drew did. Yes, I tell them relax your arm. Do you know one time your Uncle Drew had a needle stuck in his arm because he tensed <sighs> up? It's a. That's it's why a, I've never been an IV drug user. I've never done IV drugs. And those are the only ones I have, which is weird to skip all the gateway and go straight to IV drugs. You, well, yeah, you do live in Florida, though. Listen, I don't do that anymore. I get shots all the time. And I you get know shots what? all the time. Do you know what? I have developed a needle phobia. I have to lay have down. Have you really? Mm -hmm. Okay, I I'll will also out. do the same. If they're taking my blood, mm -hmm. it's something about this sharp pinch and then the heat. I have to like either anything. lay down. Mine's anything. Getting a shot. You can't get a shot? No. Like I have to put my feet up. They they call it, um, what's it called? It's like a pussy. <laughs> yeah, that's what they call it on my medical chart. That's what it says. It just says a pussy. Wow, I got, that's, I, that's I, sad. I had pneumonia and I was at a minor medical. They were like, are you good with needles? And I said, yeah, the only time I've ever had problems is having blood drawn, but I've never had a problem getting a shot. And they go, okay, fine. So, you know, they, they give that to you in your butt cheek. So I get the... Okay, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. I get the... I, I, they, stick, they stick the needle in. I go, yeah, I'm fine. I go to the lobby, and I'm waiting on Angela to pull up, pull the car up so I can go out there. And I start, like, feeling woozy. And I look up, and I go, excuse me, I think I'm going to pass out. And the woman at the counter, her eyes got real big. And she goes, Sheila! Oh, no, <laughs> Sheila. She goes, Sheila! And this woman come bursting out and she just grabs me right when my legs give out. And she like drags me back to this room and she's like, you're okay. You're okay, baby. You're okay, baby. We're going to get you a Sprite. When I give blood, I have to lay down and they talk to me the whole time and then they cheer for me and they give me like candy and stuff afterwards. You want to hear so the most good. Okay. I'm going to tell you the most fucked up blood thing I've ever given. This actually... This goes back to how this entire tangent started. Okay, so pap smear, you have to have it. HPV causes cancer. It can cause cancer. So every year I have to... As we've seen uh, in our own family, apparently. In their throat at that. The throat goat. Our dad. Thank you. Yeah, Nancy Reagan. Him and Nancy Reagan, they have a All lot right, in ahead. common. And their financial policies. He loves trickle-down economics, dude. He I, loves it. Uh, Pokemon, go to the polls. I get this pap smear from this doctor, and I got my results back today, and they're abnormal. But that doesn't mean cancer. 
It just means I've been doing weird stuff with my butt and we have to do further testing. So I just want to let all the people who do butt stuff know that you need to get your paps. But let me tell you, okay, so this goes back. So I found out about this because years ago in Chicago, I wanted to go to a gay doctor because I was doing a lot of sex. I found this doctor who specialized in anal pap smears and like anal cancers and he explained it to me so I started having them done with him and uh, I'll, I'll be honest I've never had a pap smear come back normal. <laughs> I've never had a pap smear come back normal. So wh why would they come back abnormal if not cancer? It's, well, like what could it be? It's the cells it's the cells within your butt, your anal cells, if you will. I will. They are built to handle poo-poo coming out. They're not built to have pee-pee -pee coming in. And so... Wait a second. I know. Listen. Hang on. So we were right. <laughs> it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. All right? There's a yeah, design. Yeah, and Steve has And there's a designer and brother. We're learning. So if you do stuff in your butt mm -hmm. the cells mm -hmm. can change not like for the worst just they look they a become gay <laughs> they become a little the gay, cells become gay. <laughs> um and then they do further testing to just make sure it's nothing awful which so far it hasn't been knock on wood knock on wood anyway so i start having these done 12 years ago and his nurse was like an older gay man i want to say in his like 70s and yeah. he had jet black like dyed black hair and a dyed black mustache and he was always like super guy. tanny he always gave off like just a really kind of weird vibe but i never had to be like alone with him for longer than like a minute at a time so i was like whatever yeah but he would do that thing where he would be like oh you're looking so handsome today oh my gosh i can't believe i get to take your blood you look so handsome like that kind of stuff i don't at like the, that no, and at the time I had very low self-esteem, so I thought like, this is great, I'm getting what I need. However, he goes to take my blood once, one day, and I get really lightheaded. I feel like I'm about to pass out, and I tell him that. Because he took extra blood, because he was keeping some of it at home, in his handsome blood jar. Okay, to be fair. This was handsome I, blood. I don't fault him for that. I don't fault <laughs> him for that. Just to put your blood in a handsome blood jar? Yeah, why not? Do we sell That's those a yet? Compliment. Or do we have it branded in our shop? The Twin Uendo Handsome um, Blood Jar. Handsome Blood Jars. I'm working on it. I I don't know okay. if gay people get are out allowed there. to get blood or not, but I'll try. Anyway, so I start to sweat profusely, and I'm seeing stars. And so he's like, "Oh, put your your head down between your legs." And so I do, and he's like rubbing it's good my that he back. Said your legs and not his. Well, here we Professional. go. Professional. He starts rubbing my back and I'm trying to like get him off me because I'm sweaty and it's not a nice These are feeling. my favorite uh, porn setups, by the way. The patient is about to throw up and they put their head down. Okay, you don't know this. Their, you don't know this, backs. but there is, there is a gay porn company where they make physicals videos. So like a dad will bring his son in to have a physical and then the doctor will help anyway they both end up fucking the sun but they do it with an ultrasound machine and so <laughs> you get to see the penis going in and out on the ultrasound love is okay, love so hashtag I was, target uh, well i was gonna say like everything you're describing is a straight porn setup as well but you've seen ultrasound porn no that's where oh. you that's where you went into the multiverse yeah. Because I was with you, I was like, yeah, of course, okay, so a mom brings her child in, and then the doctor, yeah, we've seen all that, but ultrasound, so hang on, yeah. so they put, where's the ultrasound? It goes right, like, above his wiener, the bottom's wiener, so you're seeing directly into where the penis is going in the butt. This is an enjoyable thing to see, an ultrasound? Grant, I've been looking at porn for over so 20 years. sterile. I've been looking at porn for over 20 years. I just need something different. An ultrasound, I'll take it. Anyway. It's uh, so bizarre. It might, that's like, that's like, uh, so these guys are having sex on a boat and it's showing up on radar. And I just watched the blip on the screen and you wouldn't believe how hot those blips are. I gotta be honest, I would watch it. You'd be into it? I'm You'd be interested. Into the radar? I've seen too much. <laughs> okay. I've seen too much. Anyway, there I am. 
trying to get this man's hand off me because I'm uncomfortable because I'm sweaty. And he's yeah. like, oh no, my handsome boy. And he keeps calling me his handsome boy. And then he leans down as I'm truly, I, I, the passing out is inevitable. And he leans down and he kisses the back of my neck. You live with me now. I have a handsome room that I keep my handsome jars in. I mean, again, I don't fault him for thinking I'm handsome. I get it. He but kissed your neck? A he medical the back professional. Of my he kissed the back of my neck. Oh, so so I go I back like to the it. doctor's office. I'm still, I'm in my 20s. So I'm too young to like fight for myself. I don't have any confidence. So instead of being like outraged, I'm instead like, that made me uncomfortable. I just want to let the doctor know so that he can stop that from happening again, but I don't want him to get in trouble. So that's what I did. The doctor came in and I was like, hey, I don't want to make a big deal out of this. And I don't want him to get in trouble, but I was starting to faint and he kissed me and I didn't like it. You know what the doctor said to me? The doctor goes, what? now Drew, we know that you like to exaggerate. And this is my what? doctor. This is not a friend. I don't see him outside of oh the doctor's my office. Gosh. Yeah. That's amazing. And he just what gaslit cool me. I keep saying, like, no, it happened. He kissed me as I was passing out. It made me uncomfortable. And he's like, okay, well, I don't know that we can keep working together if you're just going to lie. So then I storm out. And as I'm walking by the front desk, his husband worked the front desk and his husband never wore deodorant. And his husband goes, oh, you have to check out. And I was like, fuck you. Fuck this place. And I felt like so powerful. And then I just went yeah. home and cried because I, I couldn't believe that the doctor, because I was an idiot. I was a child. I thought like he must be right. Like I must have this reputation that even my doctor's like, you're a liar. And that's scary. That's, that's crazy. And so then the, so the... I switched doctors and the guy started working for the other doctor. I asked the I almost front... got you into my handsome room. 100% though. Like, so I was told to go get my blood drawn and I saw he was the person in the room. And I did go to the front desk and say that I've had a bad experience in the past. Like, can I get someone else? And they did get me someone else. They did gaslight me. Thank you, Howard Brown. Isn't that yeah, crazy? Do you think that guy's still alive? Mm-mm. No, There's I took no care way. of that. Oh, yeah, I, probably not. I don't know. If, I if don't he know. is, you could have had a real pretty woman moment. What I mean is now that you're empowered and you're strong, you go in there and bring a bag of your blood. Big mistake. And you hand of it my to blood, someone yeah. else for their handsome blood jar. People, listen, people you got my great blood. blood. You know who doesn't love it? The anyway, Red Cross. I just, but that's not a, I think we're allowed to get blood again, but know. I'm not doing it. You can't take my blood. You didn't want it forever. Solid. And now suddenly you want my blood? If you needed blood, Grant, I wouldn't do it. That's fine. Is Because is, I have HPV. Why well, have four kids? That's what I have them for. They're like walking blood bags. True. Is it true that legally you can get blood now? I think so. Man, I don't that's know. That's always been my excuse. It when would be very recent. I just so I don't gay. You said you. That is actually what they asked. They say, "Are you gay?" Yeah. I think the question is like, have you had man to man sexual contact in the last year? And I always say, like, well, yeah, obviously. Same, same here. Obviously, look how cool I am. So I the point of this here. podcast was to educate one another, and we were going to have segments, but we ended up just going on a health rant. And I feel like Grant, you probably learned a lot. About I've never heard anal and pat smear put together, and ever now, really was I the first one to tell you that? I truly didn't know it was a thing. I didn't know existed. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, if you ever have anal sex with a stranger and you're the receptive partner, okay, you need that done, Grant. Let me. I don't have a pencil. Can you text that to me? Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm just gonna put it in my Christmas newsletter. That's that's uh, the only thing I ever read, actually. Everyone, when I what that I get from you? Oh my God, Grant! Oh my God! What? Okay, I have to tell you. So yesterday was Father's Day. A time of filming. Yesterday was Father's Day. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a great Father's Day. I, Thank you for asking. What I did on Father's Day was I judged a daddy pageant. What is that? I was one of the judges for a daddy pageant. What's a daddy pageant? Um, so you know, like beauty pageants. I'm familiar. Yeah, yeah. It's like that, but they're all daddies. And so there's like, what do you mean? There's what daddy is, wear. What do you mean by daddy? Like they're just attractive like a, men. Yeah, like like daddies, like an older man. Oh, like an attractive older man. Yeah, well, the goal is attractive. A few months back, I judged a twink pageant because that used to be what I was. I know what those are. But now yeah. I'm too old. So now I'm a twas. 
And is that a real thing, or did you just make a joke that's probably going to make um, a lot of I mean, laugh. it's real in that like people like to make fun of older gay people because because we're old. <laughs> you really mm-hmm. are. Anyway, so I I I kept making jokes about how my dad didn't love me because twink, and I recently talked to him. He still doesn't. So just update. Listen, I love just a consistent daddy. I love a consistent daddy. He's pretty consistent. And so they invited me back for the daddy pageant so that I could continue that, you know, storyline. And we were, this is awful. And I, I, I admit it. I admit that this is awful. But, <laughs> okay. When they, <laughs> when they introduce, <laughs> when they introduce the judges, okay, we uh-huh. all come out one by one. And then they ask, like, what are you looking for in a daddy? And so I went up on stage and they asked, what are you looking for? And I said, before I answer that question, I just want you to know, I just got word that my dad might have cancer and the room erupts. Everyone is cheering. <laughs> so, How fun. Grant, we are a room filled with people who don't have loving fathers. Okay. I know. It's really sad and I don't know what to do right now. Oh, just stay there. I don't. But wait, okay. It's funny. But it's funny. As long as we can laugh, you have to laugh. Anyway, and then she asked, like, no, what are you really looking for? And I was like, besides cancer, um, I guess just an older man who hates me. And then they were calculating the final scores. And the host was like, I don't have anything to fill this space. And so I was like, okay, I'll do it. So I got up and I talked through how much my dad hates me and the things that he's done then one by one people got on stage and started telling their own dad like fucked up dad stories and by the end well, that's nice yeah that's we were all like hugging and laughing yeah. but yeah. i do feel a little well i was gonna say i do feel a little bad that like every time i mentioned dad's cancer which i brought up a lot the crowd would yeah. cheer and that you know that doesn't feel great it doesn't feel great. Uh, so update on on something with dad. Oh. He doesn't June... have cancer. No, we don't know yet. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow. Okay, June first. So I don't. I don't have Facebook. Um, no one does. And as soon as I moved down here, dad friended everyone connected to the church I worked for. Sure. And he kept he kept doing it. So like new people would join the church, they'd follow the page, and he would go follow them. Like he would go friend them. Okay. And if they were like, who is this? He'd be like, I'm the pastor's dad. Yeah. Um, that's and so dad. there's a, f- a friend of mine. I don't have very many left from the church, but one of them, that's still my friend. He checked his, his Facebook and dad popped up in his feed and he just sent me a text and he just said, what the fuck is his problem? And I was like, what, you know, what I said, dude, I don't have Facebook. You're gonna have to send it to me on June 1st. Mm-hmm. He posted a straight pride um, photo, right? That then said, uh, "If it weren't for us, you wouldn't be here." Which, you He's know, got a point. Solid point. He's got solid a point. point. So I was like, I was so annoyed, and you know, I'm talking to Angela about it, and Jude, my middle son, who's named after you, Jude Thanks. Hampton. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, he he's so much like you. It's it's infuriating. Uh oh, get that he's kid. He's always therapy. poking the bear. He's the best. But he overheard me saying something about homophobia. I use that word. And so we were in the car, and he said, "Hey, Dad, what's homophobia?" And I said, "You know, it's it's people who are hateful towards people because of who they love." And he said, "We don't have." anybody in our family that's a home that's that has homophobia right i was like yeah i was like grandpa's really homophobic both your grandpa he goes well true he goes well wait his son's gay and i go yeah and he goes that's messed up <laughs> and I go, yeah. yeah man it's messed up he goes well i don't have homophobia because i love my uncle drew oh i was like Okay, well, cool, man. I said, "There's look, there's plenty of reasons to hate Uncle Drew." Yeah, I got a list. The fact that he loves Uncle Curtis, not the, not the thing to hate. Wow. But uh, yeah, so so had that whole arc of horrible thing from Dad to just a really wonderful exchange with with J Man. That's so, so nice. I was trying to explain. I, not, I don't want to go into detail about this right now. But when I was drunk and I'd done some Adderall. 
I went on our dad's Facebook just to like, I think just to be mad. And I saw all the yeah. horrible things he had put like drag queens should be in jail or shot. No one's born gay. It's a mental illness, you know, all that kind of stuff. I was trying to, uh, ex- you mean the truth? <laughs> Sorry. I'm sorry. Look, I ran from it. That's what I'm here for. I ran from it. Is I want to make sure that we're it. getting the truth out there. No, th- thank you for doing that. No, but I was I was explaining. You talking about the truth to someone about like my dad wasn't always a monster, and that when I first came out, he was like the easiest person to come out to, and he yeah. just kept saying how much he wanted me to be happy and all of this. I. I I just have a really hard time explaining to people the switch. I always say, like, the open heart surgery seemed to be the start. Open heart surgery. That's exactly what I said it the other day. We heard that. When I I was a teacher at the time, and the secretary of the school I was working at said, be careful, because when my ex-husband had open heart surgery, he became really mean. And that's why we ended up getting a divorce. And she said, something happens when a human touches another human's heart. It just changes them. And I was like, okay, you know, and I think I even yeah, like told like y'all about it. And I was like, isn't magical. that weird? The and doctor said that though before the surgery. The doctor said, listen, your personality could change. Like, and it did. We need to watch it. He, he was so, so great mean. after cancer. He was wonderful after cancer. He was so great after cancer. I was not rooting and, for the cancer at that time. Nope. Nope. And then the heart surgery. Go. Oh. Yeah. He became a monster. And now he's just too old. He's going to be 81 and his brain's just mush. I tried to talk to him this past week about, I wasn't Straight talking pie. about you. Cause, well, yeah, it's too inflammatory just to bring you up. But right. I was like, I was just asking like, hey, dad, you know, have you actually looked at the Bible when it talks about gay people? I don't think it's as clear as you think it is. And we were just, I was just trying to have a conversation with him. And right. I got him to admit some things about like, well, may- yep, hey, that's crazy. Well, maybe, yeah, maybe not, you know. And and then when I got down to like, all right, so what is the issue? Like, what do you think someone who loves someone of the same sex is missing out on? Like, what's the damage that's being caused to society? What's the damage being caused to them? And what are they missing out on? How are they not living a full life? And he, his brain was just mush. He started talking about, I had a gay friend once and why do they have to be gay in commercials? And it was just yeah. the it was it was Donald Trump rambling at a at a, a rally for now rap. It was just Yeah. Ugh. So now it's it's just I'm afraid like there's no coming back. Like no, cause it's not. it's just too mush. It's too far um, gone. I don't know. I mean, you know, if he does get the cancer diagnosis Maybe it'll change him again. He's... I mean, maybe, maybe, like, you know, looking down the barrel of that, well, who knows? I'm good. I'm good. The last conversation (laughs) I ever had with him was the same, kind of similar. Like, it was, remember when he got scammed on the internet? Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah, so It's happened more than once now, by the way. Of course it has. But the first time it happened, you had told me about it, and it broke my heart. Like, I... Yeah. No matter how awful of a human he is now like there will always be that connection to my dad fuck it doesn't matter anyway it broke my heart so i was like you know what he's just an old bumbling man who does not know how the world works anymore so like maybe look past the insane shit he says on facebook because like he needs help right right so i reach out to him and for a couple weeks we had a pretty good relationship. You know, he asked what I was doing and I told him about IMHO and whatever. And I hired him to draw a caricature of the three of us. Of course, it was awful, you know, because all of his caricatures right. have the same exact faces. But I just wanted to pay him. I wanted him to have a hobby or, right. you know what I mean? And then two weeks after that, I went to Memphis and I thought, you know, dad and I, have had a good couple weeks. It's just us home alone, like having breakfast. Maybe I can perhaps like shine a light on some of the stuff that he says. Like maybe I can show him that perhaps there's another side, you know? And I, it it was almost instantaneous that he went into that you at the time, preacher son and me were the same in that we thought that post birth abortion was okay. 
because we voted for a liberal. And I said, well, explain to me what a post-birth abortion is. Like, how is it not murder? And he's like, well, they take scissors and they ask the parents, do you want to keep the baby? And if they say no, they just stab the baby in the neck. They did that to us. They did that to us when all of our kids were born. And I, out, listen, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes this nurse. And she looked so happy to be there. So fucking happy to have those Did scissors. you know that Jude and Piper were actually triplets? No. She was That's just scissor happy. I turned my back. The nurse was scissor second. happy. Yeah. Yeah. She got too excited. <laughs> anyway, but just for an hour, I was trying to explain to him why that was an insane thing to believe. And I just kept saying, like, do you actually think your kids, you don't respect us at all? You, you think we want to kill children? And he's like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do. And I was like... Okay. And that was the last conversation I ever had with him. Because I was like, yeah. oh, it's too far gone. It's just too far gone. It's sad. Well, this was a good note to end on. <laughs> None of this is going to make it in. We're no, of course it will. Grant, I got to say, <laughs> queer people, we love talking about fucked up parents. Because we all have them. Fantastic. Man, Thanks. I hope I'm I'm not that one day to my own children. I mean, I've got notes. I, hope. I appreciate that. Well, on that incredibly upbeat note let's uh get out of here because you got to go pick up a child i have to yeah. stay away from children my child so we have a really busy child. day ahead solid point so uh, this has been <laughs> this has been twin you window i'm the gay one i'm not is that the right way to and, say uh, it we'll, no it's perfect that's perfect and i'm not and uh we'll we'll see you uh, next time bye. bye i think that was solid <laughs>